Ska and reggae are enduring musical genres that continue to inspire and influence pop music worldwide. New generations of musicians keep the genre fresh by using cutting-edge production techniques and instruments, but the underlying foundation of reggae, an emphasis on the rhythmic upbeats of two and four, remains a given for a song to be considered part of the genre. So where did the emphasis on beats two and four come from in reggae? Although you can find various explanations, I have never heard a better reason than the one relayed to me by a producer who worked at an advertising agency in Kingston, Jamaica's capital. As an undergraduate, I had the amazing luck to go on an exchange program to Jamaica with my college choir and stay in the home of this advertising executive. When he learned my major was in sound recording, he generously brought me over to his favorite studio, Bob Marley's Tough Gun, where I met a bunch of the original whalers. During the trip over, he shared the story of the origin of reggae. Before I relay the story, let's get a quick refresher on reggae and watch a few clips from the amazing BBC documentary, Reggae, the Story of Jamaican Music, music starting with Jamaican the, singer and producer, blood, like Prince Buster. It's all about rhythm and blues. As the 1950s rolled on, the music of Fats Domino, Ray Charles and Louis Jordan was streaming into the island from Southern American radio stations just over 90 miles away. This next clip is a first-hand account of how Jamaican musicians played American R&B, as relayed by Ernest Wranglin, who worked with both Bob Marley and Jimmy Cliff as a guitarist. Styling like those was really rhythm and blues. What we did to this rhythm and blues is like you'd be doing One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But the, the, the scanner we change it to one, two, three. And then it's more two, four, two, four, instead of one. Now these are first-hand accounts from Jamaican musicians who invented reggae, saying that when they tried to play American R&B, they were literally playing it differently. Why is that? The musical influences at the heart of American R&B are largely the same as those on early Jamaican music, specifically African tribal music, which propagated to Jamaica the same way as it did to America, by the North Atlantic slave trade. Therefore, you would think Jamaicans should have been able to perform American R&B exactly as they heard it. And they did, but they were literally hearing it differently. In the 1950s, transistor radios became readily available in Jamaica. Radio stations broadcasting from southern U.S. cities like New Orleans and Miami were often received in Kingston, conditions permitting. Jamaicans loved American R&B, and as a result, they consumed quite a bit of it on transistor radios tuned to American stations, as well as on vinyl recordings imported to the island and played at dance parties called sound systems. Although the music at sound systems were played on higher quality speakers, the unique sonic characteristics of inexpensive transistor radios left an indelible mark on music history. To demonstrate what I'm talking about, here is a typical hit song from the 1950s that would have been broadcast from southern American cities like New Orleans and Miami, capable of being heard on transistor radios in Jamaica. Let's hear the full bandwidth version first. Now, let's hear the same recording through an equalizer set to emulate an early transistor radio. This is how the song would have sounded to most Jamaicans at the time. When you hear Tipitina from Professor Longhair played like that, you clearly hear an emphasis on the upbeats. In fact, all the rhythmic ingredients for reggae are right there in that example. Now we can understand why Jamaican musicians were performing American R&B differently, because that's what they were hearing on their radios. This is the first episode in the hit song Helix which demonstrates how technology can have a huge impact on an entire musical genre. There are many more stories like this to tell, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Until next time, my name is Harold Stefan.